Okay, so as far as color options go on the Addy K piece, we are talking about gunmetal with white accents that have been utilized on this and yellow, a very bright, vibrant yellow. As you can see, as we turn this, yellow being utilized on the crown, yellow being utilized on the top function pusher, and then as I turn this a little bit more, integrated into the silicone strap as well, alternating yellow, black, yellow, and then of course, obviously, the silicone texturized ring that you see going around the fixed bezel. For anyone who's interested in my particular opinion, uh, this is one of the two that I really like. This, uh, I think, is the sportiest look of them all. Big, bold, and vibrant colors. Now, our next option is going to be exactly the same, only every place that we saw the uh, yellow and white, we're getting red in this particular instance. So you can see the red uh, enamel style paint being utilized on that. If we go ahead and turn this a little bit, you can see that that texturized uh, silicone uh, ring underneath the fixed bezel is done in the red top function pusher surrounding the crown and then again also into the silicone strap with the triple bevel cut configuration that's been done on there. Now the other thing that's going to stand out in these other colors such as the red, let's go back to the dial very very quickly. Obviously the multi-layer with the die cut uh, cutouts that have been done on this, almost a Claude de Paris uh, style. But notice around all of the uh, Superluminova filled uh, hour markers, a metallic red, red outline on the hands as you see going through there. And these do give you a little bit different than what we saw a moment ago, the Superluminova tipped hand as well. So if your favorite sports team, maybe you're an Atlanta uh, Falcons fan, um, uh, they've got the whole, uh, uh, you know, I know it's not yeah, true black, I still go gunmetal, but uh, obviously that's going to work for you. Very racy uh, for me, I think, on this one. I, I, you know, I think uh, high-end automobiles, but your choice. That's your second option. Now, here is your third option, and obviously we've gone from red to a very dark green. In this particular instance, obviously you'll see all the same areas, including uh, the texturized uh, wraparound on the uh, crown, the top function pusher, uh, all of the enamel paint style work that's been done on the fixed bezel as we turn this a little bit more, and you can see, uh, again, that... Uh, texturized ring running underneath the uh, fixed crown, which by the way, I don't think I ever mentioned that, does match the texture that's been done on the strap itself. Let me go ahead and spin that all the way around so that you can see that. And then again, the triple bevel cuts that have been done uh, on the silicone strap. So again, this is going to give you that green option. Maybe uh, you want a little bit of luck of the Irish. Uh, then this is going to be uh, the timepiece for you. So good looking timepiece, that is going to be your third option. And last but, but most certainly not least is going to be uh, what I obviously think is going to be the dressiest look in this Sport Diver uh, configuration on this Addy K. And that is because of the use of the rose gold, actual rose gold over the 316L uh, stainless steel configuration that has been done here. And then paired up with an extremely dark navy blue. You're going to see that in the dial work that's been done here that we've already talked about, the enamel style paint uh, that's being utilized in the bezel, and then more readily apparent, I'll go ahead and turn this to the side, uh, on the strap as well. Now in the strap they bring in a white 
that's been done here. So the triple bevel cut inserts that are done are white, blue, white in this particular instance. You can see that texturized uh, under ring that's done on the fixed bezel, done in the navy blue. Uh, then if we go ahead and just spin this around really quick for you, you can also see the texturized ring uh, that wraps around the entire uh, Addy K decorated crown. There you can see the decoration that I'm talking about, as well as that very sporty top function pusher, all done in the navy blue. This would be my second hotness pick for you out of the four. I know they're all called the hotness pick, but everybody says, which one do you like, Mike? Which one do you like? Well, in this particular instance, I like this one and I like the yellow one. Uh, so I'd end up owning two in my collection, one for a little bit of a dressier occasion, the other uh, definitely a much, much more sportier look. But there you go, there is the final option. And now we'll go ahead and take a look at a more detailed, uh, in-depth review of the timepiece. Okay, watch fans. <clears throat> I chose this particular model because I think the yellow and the white is going to pop a little bit more and make it a little bit easier to be able to really get into a good description and have it very, very uh, visible to you as we go through each one of these. Now, some of this stuff will be a little bit of a repeat, so bear with me. But you are looking at overall a 52 millimeter case diameter that's been done on this. And again, when we talk about measuring a timepiece, it's usually done 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock, as you see uh, the tool I have laying across there. Or we could go uh, the other way as well, going this way. And that does not include the function pusher that has been done on this particular timepiece. Now, if we start in the center portion of the watch, and let's just talk about the very center of the watch, um, the movement. It is a quartz movement. It is the Miyota JS25 caliber movement that is inside of that. And actually, hopefully the high def shows up, you'll see the color because this is multiple layers. So what you see on the underneath there is the actual movement. Now the JS25 is going to give you uh, several features. Uh, hour and minute hand, you have a constantly running second hand off the center cannon pinion. Now if you've ever heard us talk about the center cannon pinion, that means the pinion, the cannon pinion, in the center of the dial, which is right there where I'm pointing. Then of course you have pinions on each one of the uh, chronograph subdials or registers. Now this is a tri-compact, let me try that again, tri-compacts layout, meaning 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock for your subdials. At the 3 o'clock position you have a 24-hour indicator that is being utilized there. At roughly the 430 position you do get a non-magnified standard date display. At the Six o'clock position is going to be your chronograph second hand. Now, pardon the reach here. I'm just going to come in and fire that up for you. And now you can see that hand actually moving by pressing the top function pusher, which we'll get to. And then over here, you have a 60 minute totalizer working off of the subdial. Now, this does give you that constantly running second hand which is a big request you don't have to run down your battery and speaking of battery life according to Miyota they are saying that you're gonna get approximately two years worth of use out of a fresh battery in this particular movement and that includes an approximate 30 minutes per day during that two-year period running the chronograph. So obviously if you're not running the chronograph very much you are going to get a longer battery life but in this case you do not have to allow it uh, to run to see that large second hand constantly in motion because your chronograph hand is down here. And I'm going to go ahead and stop that again by pressing the top function pusher and reset by pressing the bottom and you'll do notice that this did reset in reverse 
kind of a nice little touch uh, that Miyota's added to that. But going along with the 52 millimeter case, I'm going to turn this a little sideways if I can. And what you're going to see is 16 millimeters in case thickness. Now, this is not a true round. You'll see this, uh, and there's probably a name for it, and I really don't have one for you. But this angular piece that is built into the 9 o'clock side, and when we talk about this not being a true round, that does add cost uh, to the build of this timepiece. Lots of colors involved in each one. Uh, you're getting the white. Now this is a silicone material that goes around this fixed bezel. I do want to point that out. Fixed bezel, color coordinated to the enamel work that you're going to see on there. Uh, each of the markings uh, that's been done, we'll come back to that. And then if I turn this a little bit more, you'll see the inclusion of the yellow and black almost links that have been done on the silicone strap. Now do notice this is silicone. This is not poly. Okay, This is silicone. This is that silky smooth, very wrist conforming material that has been used on this. Now the other thing I want you to notice here, some may call this black. I call it gunmetal, and the reason I do that is I want you to look at the black strap and then look at the case itself. It is dark, but to me, this is gunmetal. If you want to argue with me and call it black, fine, go ahead. I wouldn't argue too much, but either way, black or gunmetal, if you've seen uh, any of the shows that I used to do uh, on television, you will know that black and gunmetal are actually the two more expensive plating processes that go into this. Now when we talk about color, I'm going to turn this back around. Let me get some of the glare off of there. My apologies. There we go. So you do get the multi-layer dial sitting on top of the movement is this die cut dial with all the little cutouts that have been done on there. Obviously there's the uh, Addy K uh, logo that's been done on that. And then the fully filled out uh, subdials for the uh, the chronograph registers that have been done on that. Then you've got another level which is going to be this outer chapter ring and you can see the cutouts that have been done as you look across each one of those that chapter ring has been cut out and then color coordinated are your Arabic numerals pointing off to uh, depending on how you want to use it your seconds or your minutes, either one. And that is Superluminova. So the stick style hour markers, Superluminova. These are broadsword style uh, skeletonized hour and minute hands in the Superluminova. And then also the oyster or pearl you see at the 12 o'clock position. The rest that you see in white, which is your 15 minute. Um, diver scale and the rest of the Arabic numerals that have been done on this is enamel color coordinated to the silicone ring sitting underneath the top bezel. Then if we go ahead and turn this over to the side again interworking a little flash of color here you can see the textured material going around the crown which makes it very easy uh, to be able to uh, to grip and operate and then your top function pusher is also again done in that very bright vibrant yellow and then of course that all of this is going to remain the same with the red with the green and also in the dark navy blue that's been done uh, on that. Now one of the other things since we're already here everybody's talking about oh 52 millimeters 52 millimeters it's too big it's too big first of all no it's not uh, really the way that this is going to fit the one thing I want you to notice is the very short lugs that have been done on this now notice the strap obviously fully uh, integrated into the area all the way up to the case. But several things come into play here as far as wrist size and who can wear this particular timepiece. Short lugs, a somewhat dual tapering uh, strap, meaning the thickness of the strap does go down. Now there's certainly other watches that exaggerate this more, but that does come into play. The fact that the watch is made out of silicone, and then if we turn this back 
just a touch, what you're going to see is twofold effect here. A very thick bezel, and again, this is a fixed bezel. And then through that, if you'll notice, let me turn this all the way back around and, and get a little glare there. But as you look at this, let me try and get that off of there. Through the small cutouts and just to the outside of this uh, timepiece, you see the white that's been done on there. All of these are going to add together to make this wear smaller and very comfortable on the wrist. And then, of course, on the back side, you're getting that same uh, dual color configuration. I'll turn it again for you going this way, now on the 9 o'clock side of the case. So as you can see, this tri-bevel cut uh, that's been done on this, the finishing in the silicone in yellow, then black, and then yellow. And then of course the red gives you the red, the green gives you the green, and the navy blue will be navy blue and white as opposed to the black that's been done on this particular timepiece. Now, going back over here, it is 100 meters water resistant. That is why I would turn this watch, or one of the reasons why I would turn this watch, a sport diver. And I, by sport diver, what we're actually talking about here is a watch that looks like a dive watch, which this one does and achieves that primarily through here to here on the fixed bezel. But... The sporty configuration of the colors that, that's been done here, here, and into the strap. The fact that it is not 200 meters water resistant. Now, 100 meters is going to give you, um, you know, surface level water activities, uh, you know, snorkeling, that sort of thing. Not going to be a true dive watch, but it has that dive watch look in a sporty configuration. So, therefore, I and several other folks that you would talk to within the industry would tell you sport diver. The crystal that's been done on this is a K1 crystal. Now, I can hear through the interwebs as I just said that, some of you just gasping, oh, it's not sapphire. Look, some of you really need to get over the sapphire thing. Sapphire is a great material and it has its place. But what K1 is going to bring to you is the fact that it is going to be more scratch resistant. Okay, you can see me working on this. Hopefully you can hear that as well. K1 is going to be more scratch resistant than the other forms of mineral crystal, but more impact resistant than the weakness of the sapphire crystals, which is shattering them. And trust me, I have shattered sapphire crystals on my watch twice as a matter of fact and they were both you know like very expensive Swiss made automatics um, you'd think with almost 50 years of uh, life I could uh, turn the corner on a door without catching the the door frame or the the facing there and actually shattering a crystal by hitting it at uh, the edge but great crystal that has been done on that very durable timepiece now 316L solid stainless steel construction in the case as I've already said you are talking about silicone not polyurethane silicone on the strap the watch does have a nice weight to it which is going to be approximately 195 grams will fit a rather large wrist easily um, my wrist is about eight, eight and a quarter, and I have plenty of room to move in on that. And by the way, let me go back to one thing about the crystal on this particular timepiece. You want to talk about companies that use K1. I'm sure most of you have heard of Movado. Yes, well, they use K1. Uh, Glycine. Many of you, maybe not as many of you have heard of Glycine, but many of you have. Uh, K1. Uh, Michel. Maybe fewer of you have heard of Michel, uh, but they certainly uh, ha have and or do still use that. And Reactor, uh, which is another brand that makes uh, some interesting uh, timepiece designs, K1. I mean, you can go through, you can 
pull up Google, search it for yourself, you'll see that it is a great material. But I'm really excited about this timepiece at that $129 price point. It's giving you a great look with great materials, a great size, and something that's going to be very comfortable on the wrist, especially since we're kind of in the, the early to mid part of summer. Again, depending on uh, where it is uh, that you live, you're going to be in great shape. And Alon uh, and his company, Addy K, as I've already said, one of the companies that he owns, gives you a great three-year warranty on this timepiece. The use of the Superluminova at this price point, again, here, hour markers and hands uh, being done in the Superluminova, is going to give you a great opportunity to pick this up at a fantastic price point. It's just a matter of which color or colors because again, if you're going, gee, I really want the dressier look of that uh, that rose gold to go along with the uh, navy blue and maybe this sporty yellow or the green or the red, uh, certainly you can pick up a couple of these as well. Gift-giving opportunities, you know, obviously, however it is that you're going to use it. But there you go. Quick review of this timepiece. Uh, as we go out, I'll be, you know, my, uh, you guys have my uh, email address. If you've got any questions, I'll answer them. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you. But Alon is only a phone call away, and I can certainly get the answer from him. So grab the color of your choice. This is limited time, and obviously, brand new timepiece. As I've already said, this one doesn't even have a name. It is the model number AK, as in Addy K6367. Thanks for taking a look. I appreciate it. Have fun with it.